Hey guys, Pain Train here. I wanted to do a little bit different of a video topic today. One of the things I'm most passionate about in video games are the environments that make up the game. A couple weeks ago, I was thinking of my favorite biomes in real life, such as gently falling snow on a winding road in the woods, cityscapes at nighttime, lakes surrounded by mountains, stuff like that. Those kind of aesthetics have always been important to my gaming experience. So this idea started out as I was just going to list 32 biomes and have a Twitter tournament and just see what people thought the number one uh, consensus was. But the more I thought about it, the more I wanted to highlight each environment in a video. I'm sure this has been done before and I'm sure it's been done better, but I think I'm going to have a lot of fun talking about them. So I'm just going to dive in. Now, I haven't got them listed in my ranking order. I just wrote them down as they came to me. I'll probably wait until I get some feedback on what other people think before I post how I would rank them. Though I'm sure me discussing them is going to give a few places away. Without further ado, please enjoy the best biomes in video games. First up, let's talk about Grassland and Plains area, or better known in Mario as Ground Theme. This is probably the most famous environment in video games. It's usually your starting area. It usually in introduces the player to the game. It's usually a mostly flat area with high visibility, simple or weak enemies, just to get the player acclimated. These kind of areas are great for beginners because it's very hard to get confused about where to go or what you're doing. And in certain games, it can be quite the beautiful landscape. Um, I'm thinking gently rolling hills with grass under a sunlit sky. Those type of areas always have a very calming nature, at least to me. Sometimes these areas, however, can feel a little bit boring and monotonous especially if it's an area you have to go through multiple times. And in some games, it can be a flat zone with not much to look at. And it can feel like a chore to get through, which is something you never want in your game. Usually when I think of music for these type of stages and environments, I think of general ambience or soft wind blowing or kind of a slightly up-tempo happy tune. Some of my favorite examples are Hyrule Field in Breath of the Wild. Green Hill Zone in Sonic, some of the early routes in Pokemon, and the overworld areas in various RPGs. When it comes to how I would rank Grassland and Plains, I think it's usually on the average side, uh, maybe slightly below average, which is not a knock on it. There are just a lot of environments that I like better. But you cannot take away that it is probably the most iconic environment in video games. Next up is Rocky Underground, or better known as Caves. So in, in a lot of games, this is the second environment players encounter. It's another very iconic biome, one that favors exploration and treasure hunting. Paths start becoming more complex. There can be multiple routes, dead ends, pitfalls, occasional traps. Enemies are usually still on the slow and simple side. You usually have your crawling enemies or your bat-like enemies that are coming off of the cave ceiling. A good thing about this biome is it takes an activity that in real life can be difficult to do often or safely, and it transforms it into a regular occurrence. A lot of times levels that use this biome reward the player with power-ups or prizes for going off of the beaten path. In comparison to Plains environment, caves can be a little more varied in some respects when it comes to how they are structured. In video games, there's really no limit to how deep caves can go since it's not bound by the rules of real life. On the other hand, while they can look more varied, they are restricted in theming usually. Often it feels gloomy and depressing. There's only so much you can do with a rocky background, and sometimes the lack of light can make this environment seem very boring. Some of the music you typically hear in this environment is quiet background tunes or low percussion, often making good use of echo. Some of my favorite examples would be the underground stages in Super Mario Bros. 3. 
Union Cave in Pokemon, Mystic Cave Zone in Sonic, and Criteria in Super Metroid. This environment is another one where I appreciate what it means for video games, but it's not getting my excitement level up there when compared to other environments. Next up is our first environment that's kind of an extension of the previous one, and that's Crystal Caves. Now you could argue that this should really be included in caves, but I felt there were enough unique examples separate from the rocky form of underground that it warranted being its own biome. Crystal Caves set themselves apart by being much more beautiful and aesthetically pleasing, usually having gemstones all around or making use of crystalline stalagmites and stalactites. It's usually brighter and the enemies can seem more lively. Some negatives it has is depending on the game it can feel repetitive or rely too much on their backgrounds while the level design suffers. Usually the music I associate with Crystal Caves use more twinkling sounds, can use the xylophone or the triangle, and are generally more upbeat than their rocky counterpart. Some of my favorite examples are Lava Reef Zone Act 2, Crystal Cave from Dark Souls, the Metal Cap area in Mario 64, and Gemini Man from Mega Man 3. This environment would be higher in my rankings. Most of the time I always find these biomes very beautiful and I enjoy just looking at the background while I'm playing through the levels. And I would always pick a crystal cave over a rocky one. Next we have the forest environment. And usually what I mean are either the forests from North America or Europe, your typical woods, tall leafy green trees with various woodland animals. I love the way these environments look, using the brown of the trunks to contrast the green of the leaves. These environments can feel very natural. Enemies are usually either based on animals that would typically be in a forest, such as bears or bug-like enemies. A lot of times forests can be utilized as mazes to confuse the player and keep them lost. A lot of times these environments are the player's first introduction to puzzle solving and that could be a positive or a negative just depending on what you like in games. Personally, I feel it's a positive. They can range from being lively to slightly spooky and there's a lot of variation that you can get using forests. Some of my favorite examples are the Forest of Illusion from Super Mario World, the Lost Woods from Zelda games, Click Clock Woods from Banjo-Kazooie, in some of the forest areas and Pokemon games. Personally, I really enjoyed this biome. I think it does a great job in contrasting some of the environments we're gonna talk about later, such as deserts or snow areas. It's always a treat to see how unique a game's forest area is going to be. With jungle, we have another biome that's very similar to the one I talked about previously with forest. Now how I would separate these two are jungles are usually places such as Africa, Southeast Asia, uh, the Amazon rainforest. When you think of these environments, you think of a more wet tropical feel, hotter environments. The animal life is usually more wild and dangerous. In several games, you're likely to see dinosaurs inhabiting these areas. Many times these areas will have enemies that are well hidden and will pop out at you and are overall a little more challenging than your regular forest areas. Jungle music is usually a little more upbeat and wild. A lot of games will incorporate sound of animals such as monkeys or tigers in the background to help it have a, a more feral feel in the games. Some of my favorite examples are the jungles from Jurassic Park Lost World, Jungle Hijinx from Donkey Kong Country, Infernal Isle from Beetle Adventure Racing, and White Jungle from Sonic Adventure 2. How I feel comparing the jungle to the forest environments, I, I think I prefer forest a little bit better. I would still consider jungle to be above average, but it seems to be an environment that relies more on the wildlife than the actual aesthetics of the biome. I think there's less variation you can do to with jungles as compared to forest. What are you doing in my 
swamp! Oh hey, everyone's favorite biome, the swamp. No, not really. When you think of swamp, you think of death traps, sludgy mud, disgusting aesthetics, and bugs. So many bugs. Swamps can be among the most challenging areas in, in games because these areas will often limit your mobility, making it easier for enemies hiding in the swamp waters to attack you. These areas can put an emphasis on improving your platforming skills to stay out of the muddy traps and dodge the enemies. Unfortunately, aesthetically, this is one of the uglier environments. Usually it's covered in puke green water, dead rotting trees, and vegetation. Did I mention bugs? And I've yet to find a person that actually enjoys having their walking speed cut in half by having to trudge through mud. The music in these courses can actually range from being pretty upbeat to very slow, a lot of times utilizing bubbling sound you'd hear from hot swamp mud. When I think of swamps, I think of Bubble Goop Swamp from Banjo-Kazooie, Southern Swamp from Majora's Mask, Torvis Bog from Metroid Prime 2, and that really terrible swamp in the fourth generation of Pokemon where you would get stuck every two steps. Obviously I'm not doing anything to hide how little I think of this environment. It's one of my least favorite. I think it's very hard to make a good swamp level and very easy for games to mail it in and just make it an awful place to be. Now I won't say that I hate all swamps because Bubble Gloop Swamp from Banjo-Kazooie is one of my favorite levels in the game. So it can be done well. It just needs a good balance between challenge, aesthetics, and platforming. Speaking of disliked environments, next, underwater, is probably the most infamous biome of all. It's the environment where you get to see how the character in the game you're playing swims, and often deals with having to breathe every couple seconds, or not if you're 2D Mario. Enemies are usually different variations of fish or crustaceans. Underwater areas can be extremely varied, from beautiful deep sea coral areas to low visibility lake bottoms. Usually what sets the tone for your underwater levels is how the player controls when swimming. Mobility is the most important part of most water levels. The music you hear in underwater levels usually have deep echoic sounds, heavy ambience, or sometimes all that is thrown out for an upbeat under the sea type of ensemble. What I think of when I think of underwater levels are coral capers from Donkey Kong Country, the Water Temple from Ocarina of Time, Subnautica, Echo the Dolphin, Bubble Man Stage from Mega Man, and Meridia from Super Metroid. Now despite the general consensus of everyone hates water levels, I actually appreciate water levels usually. They can be some of the most well designed areas, and if the mobility is not too bad, I like the exploration aspect that they usually give. A lot of times stages can be very beautiful and it helps that my favorite color is blue. And I will take to my grave that the water temple is actually the best designed temple in Ocarina of Time. Now I'm not going to go too crazy and say it's top 10 or anything, but I, I would put it somewhere around average. Next up is Desert Theme, another underappreciated environment in games. Usually it's just golden sand as far as the eye can see, sometimes filled with dunes, sometimes rocky areas. It can be an area where the player struggles to keep from sinking in the sand or struggles to see through a sandstorm. So typically this is one of your more challenging areas in games. Enemies are usually hidden underground and pop out at you while you're suffering from low mobility. Deserts can be cool because of these challenges. They can use so many different mechanics to throw you off. However, like Swamp and Underwater, restricting mobility is usually not a good way to get on players' good sides. Musically, a lot of these areas like to mail it in with whatever they think Egyptian music sounds like, or they just end up using howling winds. Some of my favorite examples of deserts are Gobi's Valley in Banjo-Kazooie, Sandopolis in Sonic and & Knuckles, and Angry Aztec in DK64. Deserts are one of those environments where 
if the whole game is made up of deserts, then it's very, it's not very interesting. There's not a lot you can do visually to spice up de a desert. When it lands in a game with varied biomes, the contrast it can have with forests or underwater areas, icy areas, grasslands, that contrast is what can give desert some excitement as it's usually very different than all the other environments of the game. Now in games where you usually find a desert, you'll also usually find the inside of a pyramid area. It's usually one of those environments used to complement the heat of the outside desert, and it can feel a bit, a bit tropey having these always paired up. But these environments are usually comparable to caves in which they focus on exploration and very heavily focus on treasure hunting. They're usually filled with haunted enemies, mummies, ghosts, etc. And is also usually defined by heavy use of booby traps. Some of my favorite inside pyramid areas are inside the Mario 64 pyramid, Eggman's secret base in Sonic Adventure 2, the pyramid from Boo's Fury, and the spirit temple from Ocarina of Time. I know that doesn't really count, but it's in, it's in a desert and it's inside and it's like a place of worship, so I'm going to count it. For me, these areas are okay, and it's interesting to see what treasures are hidden in these environments, but like I said, it's kind of tropey, and a lot of these areas all look the same, even across other games, and so I would not say these are one of my favorite areas. The next environment is mountains or high cliff areas. These environments are obviously very high elevation. Usually the difficulty is ramped up because there are many places to fall. Sometimes it's a rock slide area. Enemies are designed more to knock you off your footing and used more to complement the danger that the mountain holds itself rather than trying to hurt you directly. This biome can be well done aesthetically using the background. Just as in real life, the view can be amazing. But these areas can be plagued with cheap deaths, blind jumps, and unfair enemy placement. When I think of mountain music, I think of usually upbeat, triumphant music to help you scale the mountain. Some of my favorite areas using this biome are Tall Tall Mountain from Mario 64, Bass Pony Canyon from Pokemon Sun, DK Mountain in Mario Kart Double Dash, and Hilltop Zone in Sonic 2. This is one of those environments where if I'm thinking about them, I, I think I enjoy them, but a lot of times I forget this environment exists altogether. For some reason it's just not that memorable to me. And obviously they can be well done, but a lot of the times it's just like, hey, here, climb. And that's it. Next up, we've got the snow environment. This biome can often utilize downward momentum to help build up speed. Enemies are usually throwing snowballs at you. In games where the player is affected by temperature, this is one of those environments you have to watch out for. I find that this environment can be one of the most aesthetically pleasing biomes in games, but that's personally cause, just because I like the way snow looks, especially while following. Some negatives are just like swamp and desert. It can restrict your mobility when you're having to trudge through high snow. It can utilize high winds so that there's low visibility. In certain areas can be very slippery, but we'll get to that later. Musically, a lot of times games will use Christmassy sort of music with bells and trumpets. Some of my favorite examples of snow areas and games are the Twilight Princess Snow Mansion, Cool Cool Mountain in Mario 64, Freeze Easy Peak in Banjo Kazooie, the snow half of Hailfire Peaks, and Snow Barrel Blast from Donkey Kong. Personally, this is one of my favorite zones. I like it aesthetically. Usually, the music is great, and it usually has a very fun feel to it. It always makes me think of that that stretch of winter 
between fall and Christmas, which is one of my favorite times of the year. Now I know what you're thinking. Trey, separating crystal caves from caves and jungle from forest is one thing, but how is ice different than snow? Well, I can tell you I was doing a lot of research when looking at levels and making sure that there are levels that are distinctly focused on snow and those that have very heavy emphasis on just ice. Usually ice levels are defined by ice caves, arctic environments, and instead of restricting mobility, it pushes the slider in the other direction and makes sure you can't control where you're going at all. Everyone gets to slip. I think musically this can be different than snow themes as well. Like Crystal Caves, there's a focus on chimes and xylophone and triangle instruments. Some of my favorite ice environments and games are Ice Path and Pokemon Crystal, the Ice World from Super Mario Bros. 3, the ice part of Freeze Flame Galaxy and Mario Galaxy, the Mr. Freeze section of Batman Vengeance, and Chill Man from the Mega Man series. I'm not going to lie to you, this biome is way up there in my rankings. A lot of people hate these stages because of how slippery they are and how hard it is to control, but I just find that fun most of the time, and I love the way they look. It's, it's somewhere between the aesthetics of crystal caves and snow themes and just kind of mixed together to make the best looking environments and games. I'm gonna say right now, it's in the top three. Sky themes are usually where experienced players can separate themselves, as these environments are usually not forgiving, with many, many pitfalls and enemies to knock you out in the sky. These environments can make use of puffy clouds and rainbows to make very beautiful areas and will usually make up some sort of ridiculous endgame cannon where you can walk on clouds or, or float around or, or something, but this is a video game so it's fine. Enemies are usually very bird-like or dragon-like. I typically think of very upbeat music or sort of heavenly music. Some of my favorite sky areas in video games are outside of Skyloft and Skyward Sword, Storm Eagle's level in Mega Man X, Sky Town in Metroid Prime 3, Sky Chase Stone in Sonic 2, and Pokey Floats from Super Smash Bros. Melee. I would rate this biome pretty high, personally. There's just something about rainbows and cloud areas and sun that just makes, makes me feel happy. Next environment up are space themed areas, usually defined by low gravity, slow mobility but very high jumps, can be a lot of fun movement wise, alien or spaceship type of enemies, maybe danger from asteroids, aesthetically games usually have to come up with something to kind of spice up the visuals besides starry night sky, whether that's meteor showers or asteroids, comets space stations in the background. I'm also including planets or moons with low gravity in this environment. Music is a lot of times pretty weird, cosmic sounding, maybe some synth. I think it's pretty clear if you're this far in the video that like I'm not musically inclined. I just, it's just what I hear and what I associate with the theme. Some of my favorite space areas are the moon level from DuckTales, Meteor Herd from Sonic Adventure 2, some of the Rainbow Roads in Mario Kart, and Outer Space in Star Fox 64. This theme's pretty average for me. I don't have a lot of bad things to say about it, but I don't have much great to say about it. I like low gravity levels. They're fun to play around with, platforming wise. But as I said with aesthetics, they have to work really hard to make these levels look interesting and they really just sit sort of in the middle for me.
can hear the murmuring from here. How could I separate those similar levels before, but yet I'm sticking fire, lava, and volcano levels together? And I don't really have a great excuse for it other than how often do you see a level that's fire based but it's not lava based? I would say very little. The only one I can think of off the top of my head is Angel Island Act 2 in Sonic 3 and that's like strictly visually. There's nothing you can do to interact with the fire at all. I would say mostly this theme is based on there being lava around and avoiding the, the lava or the fires that the lava causes. Now when it comes to like being inside of volcanoes, yeah, there's definitely enough volcano levels where I could have separated them. But I already had 32 environments. By the time I thought of this, I didn't want to mess with that number, so uh, yeah, I'll take that L. A lot of times these will be your most difficult levels in, in the game. Usually exposed lava are, are one-hit kills. Enemies are fiercer, sometimes fire-based. Often you'll have to watch for debris and lava shot out of volcanoes coming through the air, so you're really just battling dangers on all sides. I would say aesthetically it's not one of the stronger environments unless you're really invested in red and orange, but it makes up for that in challenge and varied landscapes that lava levels can use. Music's usually very intense, often uses rock music, heavy use of guitar. Some of my favorite lava and volcano locations are Lethal Lava Land, Fire Temple from Ocarina of Time, the lava side of Hailfire Peaks from Banjo-Tooie, Lost City and Shovel Knight, Norfair from Metroid, Lava Reef Zone Act 1 from Sonic and & Knuckles, and Heat Man from Mega Man 2. I would say I enjoy these type of levels a lot. Definitely top 10 for me. I really enjoy the challenges these levels type tend to give as long as there's not cheap deaths everywhere. And even though aesthetically it can be sort of lacking, it makes up for it usually using level design and very cool enemies. Next up is the highway biomes. You won't find a ton of games that use this environment because a lot of games will stay away from your more modern areas. So these environments are usually restricted to racing games or games like Mega Man, the modern Sonic games, and every so often a Mario level will be based on a highway. Aesthetically, it re kind of relies on the background of what's around the highway because most highways look all the same. Your gray road with white or yellow lines, there's not a lot you can do there. But it helps that these stages are, are almost constantly in motion with a heavy emphasis on speed platforming and that can distract from some of the negatives. Music is usually very fast, electric guitar. Some of my favorite highway stages are the highways in Need for Speed Most Wanted, Metal Harbor and Sonic Adventure 2, Speed Highway and Sonic Adventure 1, the highway outside of Metro City and Adventure Beetle Racing, and that one F-Zero stage from Super Smash Bros. Melee. This environment's pretty low for me, not really because I dislike it, but just because there's so few far in between. It's not really an environment I think of immediately, and it's very genre specific, so it would probably be toward the bottom of my rankings. Well, originally I wasn't planning to do two separate videos, but as this would be over an hour long, I figured I should split it up. Click the box here to join me in part two, or click the link in the description. See you next time!